The third game I wanted to talk about that I thought was one of the three major games of the weekend was Notre Dame and Cincinnati. Two top 10 teams at the time. Cincinnati was ranked seven. Notre Dame was ranked uh, number nine. Um, Cincinnati jumped out to a 17-0 lead at halftime. Notre Dame cut it to 17-13, missed an extra point. And then the Notre Dame defense allowed Cincinnati to drive down and, and kind of score the, the nail in the coffin touchdown with uh, just over three and a half minutes left. And Cincinnati won the game 24-13. Um, you know, uh, to the average Notre Dame fan who maybe doesn't analyze it, you know, it, it, they probably took that loss rather hard. But, uh, you know, this was this was kind of coming. I mean, you could kind of see this coming with Notre Dame. I think the, the, the win over Wisconsin last week at Soldier Field maybe, maybe instilled a little false hope in the Irish faithful. But that game was won purely on defense and a kick return. Uh, Notre Dame was behind 13-10, most people don't realize, in the Wisconsin game, in the fourth quarter. Returned to kick for a touchdown, had two pick sixes, uh, and then had another touchdown offensively. But uh, that game did not do anything to uh, alleviate the problems Notre Dame has on offense. They cannot run the football. They have talented but new wide receivers, younger wide receivers that are dropping balls in key situations. And they have an offensive line that is that is so porous that I, 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 I kind of put them in the same class. I, the analogy I use, I guess, to, to define the Notre Dame offensive line is there are turnstiles that you'd see at a train station, but they're buried in cement feet. I mean, not only can they not move, but they let guys just blow right by past them. I mean, I was watching the Cincinnati game, and towards the end of the game there on the last drive, they were just teeing off. I mean, they were bull rushing, and, and it's almost like I could have rushed the quarterback and gotten through to him. So – Unless Notre Dame fixes that uh, and probably changes quarterbacks to redshirt freshman Drew Pine, uh, they're going to have problems. And um, I, I just don't I don't see I don't see it getting a whole lot better. They may win a lot more games, but I don't see them getting to the point where all these games are not going to go down to the wire. What was the deal? I'm looking at the box score. I, I didn't watch this game. What was the deal with they had uh, Pine had. Um, 22 passing attempts. Cone had 22. Right. And then Buckner had two. I don't know. Who, he's a running back. Maybe, he's, right? no, he's, he's a freshman quarterback. True. Oh, freshman. He's a freshman. Yeah. So what was the deal with that? Was some, was one of the quarterbacks injured still or, like, or did they just decide to split, to split time? At quarterback? Yeah, I think, I, I think it was more just, they were trying to, to create some sort of spark. You know I mean? Another thing that really caused that was Jack Cone, the starting quarterback, who's a graduate senior. So this is his last year, regardless, drove Notre Dame down on the opening possession 11 plays, 69 yards down to the Cincinnati five. And he threw an interception, threw it across his body going from right to left. And it was picked off. I mean, you know, you're a graduated senior. You, you should a graduate senior. You should not make those kind of mistakes. That drive, if Notre Dame had put the ball in the end zone, you know, you take a seven nothing lead and Cincinnati starts to think, hey, wait a minute. Maybe we can't play with these guys. You know, now people may laugh at that comment, but that there is some psychology in that in college football or in any set level of football. And then, and then they put Buchan or Buckner in, and he ends up throwing an interception. Uh, he got hit. In all fairness to him, they were on him, but he should not have released the ball, and it was picked off. So two of Cincinnati's touchdowns, their first two touchdowns, came off those off turnovers. Uh, and then Notre Dame fumbles a kickoff return uh, and, and leads to another touchdown that puts Cincinnati up 17-0. But, but to answer your question is it was purely ineffectiveness of the other two quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, that's – yeah, I mean, that, and I'm thinking – I mean, look, Cincinnati, this was a nice win for them, obviously. I mean, anytime you beat Notre Dame, especially right. a Notre Dame team that's ranked number nine. But like we've been talking about, like I said, the Wisconsin game – look, if this game was last week, right. It, right, Notre Dame hadn't played Wisconsin yet, like I think everybody's a lot less surprised at this. You know what right. I mean? Right, right, exactly. Uh, yeah. But after, after the Wisconsin's performance, and like you said, especially if you're just – if you just check this, if you just before this game, if you just look and say, "Oh, did Notre Dame beat Wisconsin," you look at the score, you think, "Wow, you know that's yeah. Notre Dame's pretty good." And right. they lose, and then they lose to Cincinnati. But everything we've been talking about about how um, the quarterback play has been, you know, suspect and the offensive right. line problems, and they really struggle. The, the part of the Wisconsin game I watched, I didn't watch the second half. They really they look they were struggling on offense quite a bit. Right. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know. <laughs> Since is is this is this another um uh is is this any type of 
example you think that that people can point to for Cincinnati if they continue to go undefeated to say this is why they need to deserve to be in the playoff? I, mean, I don't think so. You know, I think it's yeah. Well, the, but listen, you know, have, yeah. No, I I see where you're going with that. But having said all the problems Notre Dame has, regardless of that, if we get to December first or whenever it is, and Cincinnati is twelve and zero. Now, granted, they don't play anybody for the rest of the season. I mean, no right. names at all. Now, that doesn't mean they can't lose a game, okay? But but if they go undefeated, right now they're ranked number five, okay? And who's ahead of them? Alabama, Georgia, uh, Iowa, and Penn State. Iowa has to play Penn State. One of those teams is going to lose, okay? Um, Georgia and Alabama are going to end up playing in the Southeastern Conference Championship. One of those teams is going to lose. Now, you could conceivably end up with Cincinnati at number four before, when this thing is over. I think the Alabama Georgia loser is probably not going to drop. In other words, if right, you know what I'm trying to say there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I think the Iowa Penn State loser will drop out of the top five. So if Cincinnati is sitting at number four and they are 12 and 0, all right, and they have beaten Notre Dame at Notre Dame, I think I think they're a legitimate shot to get in that thing because. Well, you know, what, you're not going to tell this team. I mean, listen, I agree with what you're going to say, but they're, they're going to look at you and say, hey, wait a minute. Then then why did you why did you drop Notre Dame when we beat them? You know, or why did why did you move us up when we beat them? In other words, if you know, yeah. I just think that's that's a resume builder for it for a team like that. Right. No, I mean, they, they're, if they go to feed, they definitely they have ground to stand on to say what to, to make their case. I'm not saying they don't. Uh, I guess I'm just saying, like, Oklahoma's on the field right now, too. They're number six. Do you, do you right. see a snare where they, you know, because let me look, let me pull Oklahoma's schedule. Because Oklahoma, you know, they play, they don't really play by that big either, really. But they play Oklahoma State, who's ranked 12 right now. They play Texas. Right. But I don't know if they're going to, they probably won't let, they probably won't have them jump Cincinnati. But yeah, I mean, or, or Ohio State. If Ohio State has a one loss team, is that, is that you put them above another face Cincinnati? I'm just saying how strong of a case could be made for Cincinnati just looking at this game at the end of the year. You know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, I, I think that's what if, if you if you I mean if you're comparing to one of these like one loss or higher stage or or an undefeated Oklahoma that type of stuff. Well, I think you start getting into okay uh, if Cincinnati's undefeated and they've beaten Notre Dame at Notre Dame, Ohio State's got one loss. Who'd they lose to? Oregon. Well, that would have been a better loss if Oregon would have stayed at number three and then Oregon loses to Stanford. OK, so yeah. in other words, when you look at when all the things shake out, you have to look at these one loss teams and say, you know, what, what kind of one loss team are they now? I think at the end of the season, if everything plays out like I think it will, I think Georgia and Alabama are in period. All right. Yeah. And then, then you got to start looking at the other two teams. Who are they going to be? Well, could be Iowa or Penn State. Right. If, if both those teams go undefeated. Uh, and I think Penn State has to play Ohio State. Uh, Iowa do. does not yeah. play Ohio State this year. So no. if Penn State goes undefeated, if they beat Auburn at home, they beat Iowa, and they beat Ohio State, and they're undefeated, they're in. So now you got a fourth team. Who do you give it to? And now that's the question that's come up, what you said. Is an undefeated Oklahoma team that struggled over Tulane and West Virginia, are they better than a Cincinnati team that has beaten pretty much nobody except Notre right. Dame? That's where right. you're. Well, that's where you're going to have a big, a big question. I, but I know, and then even look at the one loss. Let's say Penn State loses to Ohio State, and they finish with one loss. Right. Ohio State wins out. They would have beaten in, um, uh, Penn State and Michigan if Michigan still had it. And Michigan State's eleventh right now. They would have beaten them. That's right. So you have a one loss Ohio State team. You have a Penn State team with one loss who lost to the Ohio State who who was going to be have just have one loss. I mean, I feel like there's all these strong teams that have all played each other that like. Uh, it's almost a better case to put them over Cincinnati in my mind. And, and I don't know, but I w Cincinnati had to be Notre Dame, obviously. Right. right they did right. that. So kudos to them. And they're going to, they're going to probably go undefeated. They're going to have all the reasons in the world to, to, right. to say why they need to be in there. It's just, I don't know if it, I don't know if, if, if some, if they won't have one of these one loss teams jump them. That's all I'm saying. Well, and I think, and I think a lot of Cincinnati's, uh, claim will, will depend on Notre Dame too. I mean, if Notre Dame wins yeah, out, that's true. That's, yeah, if, yeah. If Notre Dame wins out and goes 11 and one and beats Southern Cal beats Stanford, who yeah. beat Oregon beats Virginia tech beats North Carolina. I mean, if they do this, then, then since Notre Dame will probably be back near number 10 and that makes yeah. Cincinnati look a whole lot better. Doesn't the, it? That's, no, that's an excellent point. I'm looking at this like Notre Dame's not going to lose again, but right. uh, again, take the Wisconsin game out of your mind as far as the final score. 
Right. I mean, I, Notre Dame could lose to USC, right? I mean, it's at sure. home, though. So, sure, they could. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, my, Notre Dame could lose to the game, and then uh, then that makes Cincinnati look even weaker. If Cincinnati would have beaten like a, if they would have beaten like, you know, Penn State last week, or like, or Iowa, or obviously like Georgia, or Alabama, then it's like okay, if they go to feed, they're in no matter what. Almost in my mind. You see what I'm well, well, you know, you're right, and I think I think I'll kind of close our discussion because we're getting close to to welcoming John Bryce on, but. I think I'll close our discussion by saying that if you're a Cincinnati fan or player, you better become Notre Dame's biggest fan right now. Because <laughs> yeah. if Notre Dame loses one more, or especially if they lose two more, that win at Notre Dame loses a lot of its luster and your chances to get in the playoff dwindle significantly.